We are all familiar with desktop PCs, but what does it mean when we hear the term desktop virtualization, and why is there so much interest in this technology? The underlying architecture of a PC is the same as that of an industry standard server, consisting of hardware, an operating system and applications. In exactly the same way that a server can be virtualized, so can a PC. The operating system and software applications can be encapsulated into a file which in conjunction with a hypervisor, a piece of specialized software, can emulate the original system but physically run on any compatible hardware. This is most often within a server. In the same way a number of virtual servers can be hosted on a physical server, so a number of virtual desktop PCs can be hosted on a physical server too. Virtual desktops can be moved from one host server to another, providing benefits in terms of load balancing and resilience of the infrastructure. The virtual machine continues to operate regardless of this move. Virtual desktops have data requirements the same as servers do, meaning network or shared storage is the only practical option in an environment where these systems may move from one host to another. So now we have a solution in which PCs have been virtualized and reside within a pool of servers. Virtual desktops can be moved from server to server for reasons of load balancing or resilience. They can be deployed in minutes instead of hours. They consume less power, can be centrally managed and have the extra protection of backups administered by IT because all data is now within the network storage. So what is the catch? The clue is the personal in personal computer. Its whole purpose is to interact with human beings. A real PC interacts through devices such as mouse, keyboard, screen and a host of peripherals like webcams, cameras, scanners, printers etc. Now our PC is virtual and sitting as a software image on a server away in the data center or computer room. In order for virtual PCs to be useful we need a way of simulating these interactions remotely, potentially over great distances. In order to interact with humans, our virtual PC needs to connect to a device local to the user which has the following. A screen, a keyboard, a mouse and probably a USB connector or two for connection to other peripherals. Note that our client device does not need to be very powerful from a computing perspective because all we are doing is providing a window into the virtual PC which is actually running on a server. This is achieved using either a web browser or simple client application which runs on the device. This combination of back-end systems coupled with local client devices is called virtual desktop infrastructure. For our client device there is a range of options available including thin client a low-cost, low-power device which connects to a screen, keyboard, mouse and can provide USB ports for peripherals. A network connection links back to the virtual machine. Thin clients can be designed with no moving parts, meaning high reliability. They can also last a long time, many, many years, as all software updates occur at the server end, avoiding the client device becoming incompatible with newer software. They connect to the virtual PC using standard interfaces. So in the case of a failure, the unit can simply be replaced in minutes, meaning lower maintenance costs. A laptop or netbook has screen, keyboard, mouse, contained in a neat mobile package and can be used from anywhere with an internet or network connection. A PC. Seems a strange choice, but there are scenarios where a PC is a good choice for connecting to a virtual machine over the network. Remember, it does not need to be very powerful, so it could be an older system, which might be incompatible with the latest operating system and software, probably too slow and otherwise would have been thrown away. The fact that the choice of local user device is so varied opens up a couple of interesting opportunities. The first is that users could use their own home PC or laptop to work on. Great for home working or maybe distance learning in the case of schools, colleges or universities. The second opportunity is for users to bring their own devices into work. 
BYOD or bring your own device is a hotly debated topic in IT currently and virtual desktop infrastructure is one possible way of providing this. With the right client software it is possible to virtually run PCs on tablet devices or even smartphones albeit with some practical limitations. With the right connection technology in place the back-end systems could potentially reside anywhere in the world. Conversely the client device is also now free to roam and operate anywhere. Or indeed, the user can roam and log into their virtual PC via any compatible device that is handy. This could be a laptop or tablet while out of the office, or a shared PC or thin client in a remote office. Virtual PCs can themselves roam from one physical host to another, perhaps even to a server hosted by a third party. The concept of network diagrams to show which clients connect to which servers becomes very hard to depict. So why bother? It's a lot easier to just draw a cloud and refer to the stuff within the cloud simply providing computing services to the user. This indeed is one view of cloud computing. For a more thorough overview of the topics covered here, visit 2decipher.com.